16-month-old Star Hobson was in many ways your typical toddler. Happy, boisterous, bubbly, and was showered with affection by anyone who knew her. The thing about Star though was she wasn't born into a relatively small family or to an extended family who didn't have much to do with her. Believe it or not, Star Hobson's great-grandparents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins and friends on both her mother and father's side of the family had relationships with her. Her mother, Frankie Smith, grew up in a similar environment to that of her daughter. She lived in Bradford, had relationships with both close and extended family, who together provided a support network as she grew through her childhood. But to put this story into perspective, if we rewind only back to 2018, reporters from family members recall Frankie still playing with dolls, aged 16, favouring lifelike models that she would wrap up when it got cold. So for then only one year later to give birth to a child, it was going to be a cause for concern. Before we move forward with the video, I just want to let everyone know that viewer discretion is advised as we will be talking in depth about child abuse. On the 21st of May 2019, then 17-year-old Frankie Smith and her boyfriend Jordan Hobson gave birth to a beautiful girl, Star. Immediately, both sides of the family welcomed all into their homes with opened arms, excited to add a new member to their family. It's been said that for the first six months of her life, Frankie had been close to Star as any mother would. But without any in-depth information into those six months, we can only assume they had a loving relationship. When November crept up, however, everything was about to change. You see, Frankie and Jordan split up as Jordan was heading off to study criminology at Sunderland University. This left the now 18-year-old Frankie with a huge responsibility on her shoulders, but she crumbled under the pressure giving in to her immature state of mind. She went out drinking, partying as any single 18 year old would. That would be okay hadn't she had a small child being fobbed off to other family members and friends. She was in and out of mother duties as the weeks progressed. One of those who took on regular babysitting duties was Holly Jones, a friend of Frankie's. She would watch Little Star whilst Frankie was out drinking at places like the Sun Hotel in Bradford, a place in where she met what family described as the devil. Frankie was normal until she met her. She came from the bowels of hell. Anyone you ask said the same thing. Frankie changed when she met Savannah Brockhill. Savannah Brockhill was a dog handler, amateur boxer and qualified door staff. She once had dreams of being an Olympic fighter, but injury took that opportunity away. Either way, in the weeks after Frankie and Jordan broke up, Frankie had started to flirt with Savannah, who was working the doors at the Sun Hotel in Bradford. The two were said to have hit it off instantly. But oddly, in the weeks coming from November of 2019 until January of 2020, the two were said to have been in an on-off relationship. One minute they broke up, the next they were back together. This had stemmed from jealousy on Savannah's part, jealous that Frankie attracted both male and female attention on nights out. The red flags had shown early as Savannah showed signs of aggression and obsession. To get a real feel of how bad this obsession was though, watch Savannah here in May of 2020, making threats to people after she claimed Frankie was hers. Guys and girls need to remember the fact that Frankie is with me. She keeps getting a lot of message requests and friends requests. She's not going to accept, especially tramps like you. And if you want to keep your kneecaps, I suggest you stop sending her them. She's with the number one psycho. Going back to November of 2019 though, and babysitter Holly Jones remembered how obsessed Savannah was. She recalled her wanting to change Star's last name to hers, going on to say that she wasn't Jordan's baby anymore, she was hers. Again, odd behaviour for someone who had only known Frankie and Star for a couple of weeks at this point. Holly also said in November she started to notice Star not being her usual bubbly self, becoming more quiet and reserved. Frankie by this point had been more focused on her own personal life than looking after her daughter. 
she became a neglectful mother, feeding star baby formula for a four-month-old child even though she needed to be on the eight-month-old formula. That, on top of star being left to her own devices to feed herself, tipped Holly over the edge so she offered to intervene. She offered to have Star at her mother's home on the weekends at night to lend a hand. But as January started to come around and with this regular routine in process, Holly said Star had started to come to her mother's in bruises. She had also by this point witnessed Savannah be violent towards Frankie and at times had seen Frankie with bruises and black eyes. So when she'd been in touch with an advisor for her own personal issues as an adult, they told her to contact social services to pass the concern on to them so they could investigate. On the 23rd of January 2020, a referral to the social services was made anonymously by Holly, but for some bizarre reason, they contacted Frankie one hour before they arrived, giving her the heads up. Holly was there at the time, and she recalls how stupid it was of them to do that. It was like ringing a criminal and telling them they're going to come around and arrest them in an hour. After the call was made, Frankie swiftly cleaned the house, and covered up the bruises. In the end, two police officers arrived, not social workers. They'd spoke to Frankie and after a short while, left with a follow-up call from the social services, given the go-ahead. They did try to make contact, but Frankie wasn't at home, and soon after this, the social services contacted Holly to tell her they were closing the case because Star was in the safe hands of her mother. But sadly, just like we've seen many times before, they'd be wrong. By the time early February of 2020 came around, Frankie had enough. She couldn't cope anymore, so she reached out to her grandparents for help with Star. David Fourquet and Anita Smith were more than happy to look after Star until Frankie had got on the right track and sorted her life out. Spoiler alert, she didn't. Star's, however, did. At first, David described Star as depressed, but he'd never seen a depressed baby before, so he thought that was quite odd. After a few days at his home, however, she was back to her normal self. The self she had been before the neglect started. If I could bottle up those 11 weeks to relive that time over and over again, I would, is how David described his time with Star. Baby said to Holly could clearly see the change too. She was still carrying on with her weekend routine, looking after Star to give David and Anita a break. Holly was happy that they lent a hand, hoping Frankie would in some way leave Star be and allow her to grow up there with her great-grandparents, which did seem like it was happening as she rarely went to see Star in those 11 weeks. But that's exactly it though, it was just only 11 weeks. On the 26th of April 2020, David, Anita, Frankie and Star had been together for the afternoon. Whilst out and about, Frankie said that she wanted to take Star to her mother's for around an hour. They both left, and this was then followed up by a phone call saying that Star was staying over for the night. David thought nothing of it, that's fine he recalled. But when he passed Frankie's mum's address and seen that Savannah's car was parked outside, he said that his heart sank, and he had a gut feeling Star's time with him was over. He was right. David didn't see Star again until the 16th of May. She was at Frankie's mum's house. It was Frankie's mum's birthday. Frankie and Savannah weren't present. David would go on to give Star a cuddle and a kiss. Sometime later he left, but received a text message from Frankie where she said, and I quote, Don't you ever touch Star again picking her up. She's our star. She's our baby. Don't you ever come near her again. And if you do, I'll report you to the police. Rewinding back to February though, and let's take a look into what Frankie had been up to while David and Anita were taking care of Star. All we know from reports is that Frankie and Savannah's relationship was volatile to say the least, again stemming from Savannah's obsession over Frankie. In February of 2020, Savannah had became paranoid that Frankie was cheating on her. In messages sent to one of Frankie's sisters, she said, I'm broken. I'll stab someone tonight, I swear. I'll go to your mum's house tonight. She's everything. I'm not having it. Frankie's sister replied, I thought she was being dodgy earlier. I've messaged her. I'll tell you if she replies. 
Savannah responded, Why would she do it? I don't care about kids in the house, I'll rage. Fuck it, they're going to need police in the house to take me away. As you can see, Savannah was clearly unstable. In March of 2020, more family members started to suspect the relationship was turning extremely violent after Frankie had started to make appearances in public with bruises and black eyes. In an incident that was witnessed by many at the Sun Hotel, Savannah proceeded to grab Frankie by the arm and called her a whore while locking her in a bathroom cubicle for speaking to a man. Later that same night, she punched her in the pub and told Frankie she was going to drive them both off a cliff on the way home. During that drive home, Frankie had started to break down in tears. Savannah's response? Well, she proceeded to tell her to shut up and to stop crying, all while she was giving her multiple backhands. In the end, Savannah backed out of her plan to drive them both off a cliff. Rather took Frankie to a plot of woodland at the end of Savannah's street. When they got there, she grabbed Frankie by the neck and told her she was going to bury her in the woods. When the pair finally reached Savannah's house, however, the abuse didn't stop there. Savannah proceeded to kick and slap Frankie, leaving her with visible bruising. This testimony was actually backed up by twisted text messages sent by Savannah to a friend. I tried to kill me and Frankie last night, she said. The friend, obviously concerned, responded, what the fuck? Why? How? But she went on to say she ended up with a hiding or beating I'm out of control. Honestly, I just can't. I just lose it. Those are just a couple of tens, if not hundreds, of incidents that Frankie herself was victim to. By May of 2020, Star had been taken by Frankie, and this is where the abuse against her had really started to amplify. David and Anita star's great grandparents heard there was word going around that savannah only one week after they had taken star back had been choke slamming her in other words savannah had been picking star up by the throat and throwing her on the bed david heard that this had been some kind of mixed martial arts move not suitable for a toddler a cause for concern it was all getting a bit too much for the couple, so they decided to make a call to social services about the issue. Anita called social services early May time, but believe it or not, no one from the social services ever got back in contact with her, even though she made the referral in her name, not anonymously. In fact, the only way she knew they'd been round to see Star is at some point after the referral was made, she had been verbally abused, for calling the social services on Frankie and Savannah. From here, both Anita and David were banned from seeing Star, so when David had seen her on the 16th of May at that birthday party, all hell broke loose. And that's when David received those messages from Frankie. But the social services should have acted because Star was about to fall victim to abuse that would eventually lead to her death. You see, when Star left David and Anita all the way until September of 2020, she was subjected to horrific acts of violence, degradation and humiliation at the hands of her mother and Savannah. She was punched, kicked, slapped and had her body parts twisted. She was choke slammed multiple times in order to toughen her up. She was that exhausted from being kept up at night, she fell off a chair and smacked her head on the floor. This was recorded by both Frankie and Savannah. They were heard laughing as she fell. They took this one step further though. They dubbed the video with music and sent it around to friends. They said it was a comedy sketch, something that you'd see on a viral YouTube video. We now know though, this was just a part of the abuse. She was also filmed being shouted at to face the wall by Frankie on multiple occasions. Star would cry out, but Frankie would just continue to shout. In one incident at McDonald's, babysitter Holly Jones, Frankie, Savannah and Star had been in the car. Everyone was eating apart from Star. Holly decided to give her some food, but by accident, Star had bit her finger. To this, Savannah shouted, Oi, she's just bit Holly, what are you going to do about it? Frankie proceeded to bite her own daughter's finger. 
Away from prying eyes though, we can get a glimpse of what Star went through via Google searches on Savannah's phone. All these searches were made either whilst Star was in Savannah's custody or immediately after. What can someone being nasty than nice do psychologically? How to dry drown someone? What can snapping your ankle do? What happens when you bend your fingers back? What happens when you get punched in the abdomen? Babies bending their fingers back. What does bending your fingers back do? How long does it take to be traumatised? What happens when you can't breathe? These were just a few out of the hundreds of Google searches. As you can see, it wasn't just physical abuse, it was also psychological. In one incident, various Google searches were made one after another. Does Sudocrem take away bruises? Signs of child abuse? Witch Hazel, good for bruises. Little Star was captured the following day on CCTV with white cream on her face, more than likely pseudocreme in order to try and mask the bruising she had received on her face. What hasn't been widely reported on though is the fact that both Savannah and Frankie admitted in voice messages to each other that they'd been drowning Star. The messages came after Frankie had been out drinking for the night. Savannah had custody of Star, and she wasn't happy that Savannah was looking after her. An argument would ensue, and talking of the drowning portion of the conversation, it went as follows. Savannah asked, Do you duck her head under the water, in reference to Star? Frankie responded, I did. You do, but who does it for longer? By June 20th, 2020, David and Anita had received a picture of Star that had been passed around to friends and family. He was shocked, angered and disgusted by what he had seen. From this to this in five weeks, what's going on Frankie? Star seen pictured with bruises on her face. A stark contrast from when she was in his custody. One day later, the picture was seen by Jordan Hobson, Star's father. His reaction? The same. He made contact with the social services, the third referral made up until this point. As it's her father, they seemed to have taken this one slightly more seriously. Both police and social services took Star for a hospital examination. Frankie claimed that she had hit her face on a coffee table and had been injured playing with a puppy, something medical examiners agreed with, so the investigation was closed. But sadly, the abuse didn't stop. Believe it or not, only two days after Jordan's report is made and closed, family friend Rachel Whitley made contact with social services for a fourth referral. An incident had went down at a barbecue which left her disgusted and she felt she had no other choice but to contact social services. Talking of the incident, she said, I gave Frankie some food for Star. Star was being a bit awkward. Then it looked like Frankie ragged Star, picked her up roughly. I saw my neighbour's face and she was shocked. I thought it was disgusting, giving her barbecue food the way she handled her. There were five referrals made to social services though over the treatment of little Star Hobson. The fifth made by Frank Smith, Star Hobson's other great-grandfather. This referral was made after he saw this exact video you're about to watch now. As you can see, as a concerned family member, you'd have to ask yourself where this bruising came from, and so he did. Contact was made on the 2nd of September 2020, and when social services visited the next day unannounced, Star was at home with Savannah whilst Frankie had been in Scotland. Social services noted that Star was unsteady on her feet as she walked into a sofa whilst they were there. There was also bruising on her cheek and right shin, but were told by Savannah that she had fallen down the stairs. The fifth and final report was closed on the 15th of September 2020. Social workers put the referral down as malicious intent, but they were wrong again, and Frank was furious. 
In fact, the video that you seen just a moment ago was released by Frank less than one week ago to show the public what Star's condition was like leading up to her eventual murder. The last referral was closed on the 15th, but believe it or not, Star not only two days before that on the 13th had been subjected to 21 blows over the period of three hours that was captured on CCTV. The footage came from a camera at a recycling plant in Doncaster where Savannah was working as a security guard. The footage appeared to show Savannah punching and slapping Star with what has been described as considerable force. At one point the toddler fell out the vehicle, she was ragged back in and was also grabbed by the throat. By September of 2020, Star had suffered bone fractures to her skull, right tibia or shin and two ribs. All these were given before her death. Just days after Savannah had beaten her, Star was captured on CCTV being dragged through the streets of Bradford. She was actually medically unable to walk at the time because of that fracture to her tibia. Frankie was concerned that she couldn't walk due to Savannah's treatment of her. In a text exchange between the pair, she told Savannah that things would need to change and that it would be better if they split up. Later adding that she was going to take Star to the hospital as she was doing that thing with her leg again. Savannah said she was just throwing a tantrum, but believe it or not, she had actually fractured that same shin bone before. All these incidents going down days before Star's life would sadly end. The people who were supposed to shower her with love and protect her from evil ended up being the ones she needed protecting from. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Uh, yes, yeah, she's breathing. Is she conscious? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. She's got, um, a bit of both, really. Basically, it's me partner's daughter. It's my little girl as well. I brought her up. Um, we've got all three children here playing. And uh, I was in the kitchen making a coffee. And they've been in the living room. And I heard uh, a bang. So I came came out and the little lad stood there and the little girl's on the floor and um, she she was crying and then she stopped crying and then she was sick and now she's just a little bit floppy to be honest with you. And what do you know how what the bang was? Uh, no, I don't know what the, I don't know if she's fallen off the off of the sofa or I don't know. Just just the you know, the three of them playing with us. And right. he, just, he just said, start, and when I walked in, she was led on the floor. Push, darling. So you heard a bang, the patient was on the floor. I've heard a bang, yeah. I came in, and the little lad was saying, star, which is the little girl. Yeah. So, I've, I've obviously, I've, I've, I shout at the mum in, so sit up, star. So I sat her up, and I started to rub her back, because she was, like, breathing, but, like, struggling. Yeah. So I was rubbing her back. Um, she started to be sick. So I led her on the floor, yeah. put her in like CPR position, started to run, run her back. Um, she started to lose, lose breath. So I performed CPR on her. So you've done CPR on her? Yeah, I've done CPR. I've got her in the position, the recovery position now. On the 22nd of November 2020, a 999 call was made at roughly 3.45pm. You've just heard a segment of that call. When paramedics arrived at the flat on Wesley Place in Keeley, they discovered the body of a lifeless, pale baby wearing a disposable nappy. That baby, none other than Star Hobson. She'd been subjected to catastrophic injuries, including extensive damage to her abdominal cavity caused by either punches, kicks or stamps. Her autopsy revealed there was 300 millilitres of liquid blood in the abdominal cavity, almost half the total blood in Star's body. The accumulation of blood occurred due to the laceration of the largest vein in the body. According to paramedics at the scene, they said she was breathing shallowly and they had concerns for her life. She was in need of emergency medical attention from specialist doctors, and there was little they could do at the scene. So paramedics began to rush her to hospital. On the way there, Star stopped breathing, so they began CPR. When they did so, she started to vomit large amounts of brown fluid and suffered a cardiac arrest. To this, they injected her with drugs to restore her heart 
and got her to hospital as fast as possible. Emergency clinicians did everything they could to save her, but ultimately they couldn't, and she was pronounced dead later that same afternoon at just 16 months old. A couple of days later, both Savannah and Frankie were taken in for questioning, and they were eventually charged with Starr's murder. They denied the charges that were brought against them, so a trial went ahead in October of 2021. Throughout the trial, Savannah was seen laughing, shaking her head, yawning, grinning, and chatting to someone off camera, whereas Frankie sobbed throughout. We've gone over the main portion of what to take away from the eventual trial, but I did want to point something out in regards to this reoccurring theme of Google searches. If there was still any doubt in your mind that those previous Google searches weren't made in relation to the abuse of Star, then what I'm about to tell you should change your point of view. You see, after Star had been beaten to death, Savannah had assumed Star went into shock, so she Google searched shocking babies and how to bring a baby out of shock. This was 15 minutes before that emergency services call was made. Medical experts don't suggest Star could have been saved in those 15 minutes, but the prosecution said it was sickening the pair didn't make the call sooner. Either way, after a trial at Bradford Crown Court, both Frankie and Savannah were found guilty. Savannah on the murder charge whilst Frankie was found guilty for allowing the death of her baby. Savannah was jailed to life with the minimum term of 25 years, whilst Frankie was jailed for just eight. After the trial, reports came out to say that Savannah Brockkill had suffered not one, but two cardiac arrests just days before the trial. It was reported that she was admitted to hospital, having been found collapsed for over an hour in prison. She was having some form of seizure, which had lasted one hour and 20 minutes. When she was taken to hospital, she went on to suffer from three more seizures and two cardiac arrests. CPR was performed, she would go on to survive, and ultimately she was jailed for killing Star. Then more reports had came out to suggest that Frankie's father, Andrew Smith, took his own life in June of 2021 after he struggled to come to terms with what his daughter, Frankie, had done. According to Frank Smith, Andrew's father, he was the one who made that last referral, he would go on to say he had a handprint on his window from the baby and never washed it off. He couldn't handle it and so he killed himself on Frankie's birthday. He sent her a card in prison and wrote, you look after yourself and I'll look after the baby. It's been devastating. When we found him, Star's coat was at the side of him. My son did what he did and had 50 years of life. That baby had only a few months. <laughs> 